the DP is concerned that while in opposition, the UPND assured all those that were retired in national interests to consider themselves as being on leave, as they would be reinstated immediately the UPND formed government. We have noticed with concern that the fulfillment of this campaign promise has taken a regional flavor, as so far only those coming from a few named provinces have been reinstated unilaterally while the rest have been asked to go through a non-existent board to hear their cases on an individual basis. The double standards demonstrated by this government is likely to fund tribal division, especially among men and women in uniform, who form the majority of those that were retired, using the frivolous reason of being politically inclined towards the UPND itself. We are therefore asking government to come clean on this campaign promise and ensure that they demonstrate equity for all that were retired in national interest, regardless of their tribe or ethnic background. 2022 National Budget. While we appreciate the leap of faith with the 173 billion kwacha budget that the finance minister, Comrade Stumbe Komsogotwane, presented on 29th October 2021, the DPs are however concerned with some issues arising from the national budget that I will summarize as follows. One, there is unplanned decentralization through the constituency development fund. Two, there is limited incentives to support value addition. Three, there is clearly no clear roadmap towards economic diversification. Four, there is consumptive borrowing at the expense of production. Five, government is relegating its obligations and government, I'm talking about the central government, relegating its obligations through the constituency development fund. The government is not run through CDF. And I speak as minister for seven years. CDF is just one component of government. And you can't relegate really road projects, medicines, youth empowerment programs, everything, and you lump them on CDF using the 25 million kwacha as an answer. It doesn't work that way. Marginal adjustment of the pay as you earn in the lower salary band that does not take inflation into consideration. And also the punitive pay as you earn for the higher salary brackets. Country men and women. While most of these areas highlighted above are critical, the DP is particularly concerned with government's failure to take responsibility of providing infrastructure development at constituency level and thereby opting to relegate this responsibility to a constituency. We are equally concerned that such an action does not take into consideration some constituencies that are geographically diverse, like Asempa, and may require more resources to meet their operations. Because if it is just operations you want for a constituency, what criteria have you used to give the same money to Kasempa constituency and Kawata constituency? What criteria have you used to give Chipiri constituency and the, the constituency in Chavuma? They are all getting the same money. Are the needs the same? That is for you to answer. The approach taken by government does not equally take into consideration the absence of amenities such as banks and other service providers in some constituencies, therefore making the exercise hard for some constituencies and local authorities to fulfill their obligations. A review of the population and landmass of some rural constituencies should have helped the finance minister to opt for creating capacity for constituencies before lumping such a responsibility on them. In decision informing government. The DP would like to join scores of Zambians who have raised their voices at how long it has taken the government to make key government appointments, including to such important positions as controlling officers as permanent secretaries. In the operation of government, as a controlling officer, 
a PS is a key accountable person in the running of a ministry, and therefore the delay in appointment of PSs has created a void in the operation of government. We are therefore calling upon the President to hasten the process of appointing senior government officials to allow for the smooth running of government. Any further delay in making appointments goes to highlight the lack of preparedness in the UPND's ability to form government and consequently in governing the country. You can't take three months just to appoint a permanent secretary. A permanent sub a secretary is a sub-warrant holder in any line ministry. To take three months is leaving the system porous and allowing all kinds of things to be happening in ministries. It might be too late for some of these things to happen. When they'll be taking actions, a lot of damage will have been done. And you'll say, no, we're doing this thing methodically, systematically. There's nothing methodic about this. I also want to talk about security of the president. The DP is concerned that the presidency is being taken lightly in the manner that the detail around the president is being handled. We are alive to the fact that the president has taken some actions that potentially compromises the presidency. It is important to note that the country is not short of qualified people who are trained in the management of the presidency and yet the head of state has opted to create a shield between himself and highly trained presidential security. We are also concerned that the continued use of his private residence poses a risk to the presidency as only state house and the state lodge were made with the full features and the systems that are secure enough to protect a head of state. His continued use of his private residence is not just an inconvenience to his neighbors who are stopped every time he's moving to and from, but also poses a security challenge as his handlers have to deal with a road that was not specifically made to manage the movement of a president. You will wish to know that there are specific roads that a president is supposed to use. It's not every road that a president chooses. There are specific roads that he's supposed to use. That is not one of the roads he's using. And it's bringing all those kind of uh, lapses on the part of governance. And those who can talk, who talk for them, so they can know that we know how government is supposed to run. Additionally, the president must consider the human cost of having to deploy security all the way from his residence to state house and how far that expense can go if it was directed to, to other key areas of the economy. I think the root lining that I'm talking about is for the police. There's root lining now from his residence all the way into state house and they have to wait, maybe he has to go for lunch Again, the police have to be there, root lining, and the president has to come back. Yes, I know that the president was uh, overwhelmingly uh, voted for by the people of Zambia, but that doesn't take away the etiquette of the presidency. He has to follow the rules, and he has to follow them also, so that uh, we set a precedent. We don't want tomorrow I'm president and I will decide to go and uh, stay Mumansa. And I will say you'll be flying in to Lusaka every day. I think that is not correct. We are also concerned that the president has chosen to use commercial flights traveling outside Zambia, but he does not see anything wrong with using the presidential jet when he's carrying out party activities while campaigning within the country Zambia. I think we would like to call upon President Akainde to walk the talk and demonstrate real savings by opting out also of using the presidential jet or the chopper while he's in the country. Women and youth disengagement. The DP is concerned that the new government has paid a lot of lip service to issues concerning women and youth. This is also evident in the appointments that have been made by the president so far which are skewed towards the men. It is important for those in government to appreciate that as a country, we have made commitments to increase women representation in governance 
and the new government seems to be going back against those commitments. The current government has equally not paid attention to the appointment of youths in government positions as well as to ensure that they are adequately represented. That is why we in the DP are proposing that the youth agenda should be a national agenda by ensuring that every line ministry has a department of youths. Every quasi-government institution must run with a youth department in order to train them not only for today, but for tomorrow as well. Yes. The DP is equally concerned with the continued use of women and youth to receive the president at public gatherings and meetings. Such tendencies erode dignity from our women. The DP realizes the value that women and youths play in any progressive economy, and it is against this background that we will continue to advocate for the welfare of women and youths in Zambia and the role they play in economic development and national building. <laughs>